Hello, this is Swipe coming up on the show. Angela gets acquainted with the robotic pet helping dementia patients. I meet the startup behind glasses that tell blind people what they're looking at. And we bring you action and adventure in this week's Games Review. Welcome to Swipe. This week from one of London's hotbeds of tech talent. This is Wiry UK. It's an incubator for startups. There's places like this that really try and help entrepreneurs turn their ideas into successes with investment and mentoring. A little bit later on, I'll be meeting one startup behind some very smart, smart glasses. But before then, Angela has been making some new friends this week. The cute robotic kind. These colourful micro-robotic creatures are being used to help relieve stress in the workplace. The Hexbug fish are powered by electromagnetic propulsion and an automatic on and off sensor which activates them when submerged. One company in Manchester is trying out the technology. For our people, what it means is that they, they have this opportunity, this environment where they can sort of step away from the desk, sit in front of this. We, we did it, we had a group of people sitting around here at lunchtime yesterday and it's quite hypnotic, you know. Just the movement, also the clicky noise that the hex bugs make is great and um, it helps with quite a tranquil environment, helps you to relax. And here's another pet that offers companionship without responsibility in the form of artificial intelligence. Meet Chip. This robotic dog uses smart band technology, enabling Chip to recognise you, follow you, remind you when it's ready to eat and when it's ready to play. Have you seen my other slipper? Robotic pets are also being developed to help patients with dementia, like this one called Paro. It imitates animal behaviour, enabling it to respond to touch, light, sound, posture, and it even develops its own character over time. <laughs> Working with the University of Brighton, Sussex Partnership NHS Foundation Trust introduced Paro the Seal on one of its wards after being given funding for the project. There are various parts of its body that have sensors and it will recognise ranges of movement and repertoires and it will repeat things that get a reaction. Paro works to function as a therapeutic medical device. So whilst it looks quite cuddly and appealing, it's basically a, a robot covered in fur. As a medical device, we would be looking to use this with very specific people with dementia where we might be wanting to reduce agitation or allow a person to express themselves emotionally by using paro. This technology is not about replacing real pets. The intention is to use them as an additional tool to help people. Sussex Partnership hopes its research will show why devices like Paro should become more widely available to those who could benefit. Angela Barnes, Sky News. You're watching Swipe, still to come. I meet the software maker transforming glasses into guides for visually impaired people. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech news. This video of a robot solving a Rubik's Cube in little over a second has been proving a hit on YouTube. Two software engineers in Kansas built the machine that unscrambles the Rubik's Cube in a mere 1.047 seconds, as fast as you can blink. The pair are now applying for official world record status. We've all heard of 3D printing, but what about 3D knitting? One company crowdfunding on Kickstarter has begun knitting footwear. JS Shu says 3D knitting technology means the lightweight slip-ons don't need any stitches and you don't need to wear socks. The shoes are designed using a computer program before being transferred to the machine. For anyone tired of forgetting the combination code for their padlock, a project on Indiegogo is hoping to make life a bit easier. The makers behind TAP say it's the world's first smart fingerprint padlock able to unlock in under a second. Mark Zuckerberg will be hitting the like button after Facebook posted profits of more than a billion pounds in a single quarter for the first time this week. The company saw net profits more than double in the run up to Christmas. Apple also posted a rise in quarterly profits, but the tech giant announced a slowdown in iPhone sales and its Safari web browser crashed briefly. The entrepreneurs here are working on all kinds of different projects. Who knows, a couple of these guys could be the next Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg. 
I got to catch up with one startup behind some software you might have already heard about. It tells blind people what they're looking at, which already sounds amazing, but the co-founder says that's just the start of things to come. This is imagine it's a normal pair of specs with a camera on the side. If you pick up any product right there. Right, I want some lip balm. Here we go. So the way we sort of teach users to use it is touch, try and touch the camera with the product. Touch the camera. Put it away for a bit and just hold it still for a few seconds. Holding it still. Detect Vaseline lip therapy with rose and almond oil. It even tells me what flavor it is. I love how it brings a smile to your face. Right. You can try uh, a different product. Some chopped tomatoes now. Here we go. Same again, touch the camera. Detect KTC chopped tomatoes. Brilliant. You can imagine if you're blind, it's hard to tell whether it's a can of beans or tomatoes. All the objects will feel the same. But what about reading? Sure. So if you uh, pick up an article, just open anywhere in the page. Do I have to touch the camera? No, it's no. it's pretty big, so you, you should be okay. Page 67. Heads up for a smooth ride. 4K you can already put it down. It already scanned it. I don't need to no, keep holding it. I can imagine a lot of people might be watching right now thinking that they know somebody who would want a pair of these. How much sure. are you going to sell them um, for? Right now they cost between 500 pounds to 2,000 pounds, but it will obviously go down in price. We're looking at a monthly plan, where rather than would pay one, one bulk sum up front, they would pay a monthly subscription service as if you would have with a smartphone contract. Would you one day put these on the NHS so people can get them more easily? I think it will be great in UK, but there are a lot of countries around the world where people could use this technology and they don't have the luxury of NHS. So we designed this product to be accessible for anyone uh, with a mo monthly subscription service without relying on NHS or health insurance. Are there any other uses for the kind of software that you've built into these glasses? We used a computer uh, vision application to recognize faces for blind people. So the blind person could recognize faces of their loved ones or even read emotions of other people because they can't see. Uh, and we used an application of MIT open source project where they actually use camera to tell uh, a heart rate of the person looking into the camera. So why my would, eyes why would you do. want that? Why would you need to know my heart rate? I mean, I wouldn't want to, but for blind people, this is a project to recognize people's emotions because they, they can't tell. But obviously, I can imagine that law enforcement officers we might be interested to know whether someone's lying to them. Are they being honest? Now we have a number of applications for sighted people to be able to speed read content that they're looking at. You know, if you're having like a memory bank on your face, you can access it at any time. So what was I reading half past two yesterday while having a coffee? Now time for some games. The Witness is on PlayStation 4, PC, and will come to iOS soon. It takes inspiration from the game Myst, you may remember from the 90s, one of the biggest selling games on CD-ROM. And it takes place on a very strange island, uh, which is full of puzzles on different panels. Now, at first, you don't really know what's going on. You know you have to solve the puzzles, but as you go, the puzzles teach you how you need to move your way around the island. Jonathan Blow, the guy behind Braid, is behind this, and he's designed this island, which has different regions. The graphics may look simple, but they are extremely smooth because it's first person. As you move across your island, you will see no glitches at all. There's 650 puzzles, you don't need to solve them all to finish the game and I promise you now, playing it, your head will hurt. You will get frustrated but there will be something that makes you keep going back and if it makes you feel better, if it is making your head hurt, just think of the people who made the game and how they came up with these ideas because it is mind blowing. The War Is Mine, The Little Ones, is on Xbox One and also uh, PlayStation 4. Now, The War Is Mine has been out before. This is a newer version where they've brought children into the fold. If you don't know about the game, it's kind of based on what happened around Sarajevo in the mid-90s with the war there. And although it's a war film and it's about survival, it's not survival by shooting. It's how it affects everyday people and the civilians left behind in the aftermath of war. Your mission is to survive. You do that by looking after people. You have to go and loot shops and get objects and just basically the story takes place day by day so just something as simple as feeding yourself is an, a major accomplishment of any day in this game. The thing that really strikes me about this game is it's beautiful, it's artistic, it has this, has this great black and white monotone vibe to it. You're not going to come away from this game all skipping, skipping and happy, it's not that kind of thing but it will have an effect on you which makes it very memorable.
Lego Marvel Avengers is the follow-up to uh, Marvel superheroes, also in the Lego brand. Now, this follows the plot of quite a lot of films. It's got the Avengers, the Avengers Age of Ultron, Captain America, the first Avenger, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Iron Man 3 and 4, the Dark World. Yep, yeah, they've got all of these films into one game. So as you can imagine, it does make it a little bit complicated with different narrative arcs happening at the same time. There are also over 200 characters to play. Now, we, we know obviously multiplayer is a thing of, of the Lego world, but with this many, I think it may actually be too much. It has the usual Lego game things like combo moves, and there are some very, very impressive cinematic sequences in this game, you know, replicating the films that it's based upon. Uh, it's the usual third person action adventure with puzzles to solve as well. It is a great game, but I must say, in my opinion, there are better Lego games out there. Well, that's it for this week, but don't forget to take a look at Sky News on mobile and iPad for all the latest tech stories throughout the week. I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.